How to upload your mods to Modrinth. First of all, you want to navigate to modrinth.com and make an account. You can do this by going to the sign in button and then saying create an account. You can either sign up with any of these services or use your email address. Once you've created the account and verified the email, you can now go on to the top right over here and click create project. Here you can choose a name and then it's automatically going to fill in the URL over here which you can customize if you so choose to. Visibility should be fairly self-explanatory. Public means that it is visible to everyone. Private means that it is only visible to you and unlisted means that it's not visible on the site itself. However, you can send people links and they will then be able to go there. The summary right here is what appears on the left side of the screen. The summary right here is not a description. It is actually just a summary that's going to be displayed on the left side of the screen, right on the sidebar here on your projects page. So this is just a very short summary of what the mod is. Once you filled every Everything out, you can hit continue and you can see that the page has been created. Now you can also see that now you get a publishing checklist, which is actually very useful. So you can upload different versions, add a description, add an icon and so on and so forth. So let's go through each of the steps of the checklist. So we're going to first of all upload a version. So we're going to go to the versions page, which is going to open at the bottom. So we can then upload a version. In this case, I'm just going to drag my jar file into the window and it's automatically going to upload this. Because the jar file was called kaupenjo gregu fabric dash 1.4 it actually took a lot of different things over here in the version number and inside of the loader so it actually so it actually figured out quite a few things but if you want to change any of them of course you can you can also change the name right here in this case i think that that's going to be fine it's going to be 120 and then i'm going to do a dash 2 in this case my jar file is actually going to be working for 120 120.1 and 120.2 the version number is 1.4 and the loaders are fabric. That is correct. If you want to change anything here, you can of course do so. Those are drop down menus, right? If you have a different release channel, if this is just a beta version or something like that, you can do it here. The change log is just basically what's changed in this version. In this case, this is our initial upload. I'm not going to add any change log as this is the first jar file and there's no update to be had. We can add dependencies right here, which basically means, hey, if you want to install this mod, right, our mod that we've uploaded, you also should add this mod, right? You can make these required dependencies optional, incompatible or embedded dependencies. So let's say, for example, your custom mod has an optional dependency for REI right here, right? Roughly enough items, then you could add REI right here. And that would basically then add this as a dependency. So when you download Account Majors Also Consuming Grey Goo, it should also download REI and it's going to prompt the user, hey, you also need this or this is an optional dependency. In our case, we don't need any of this, so we're not going to use it. I do want to navigate back to the name over here because I do think that the name right here should actually be Grey Goo. And then I'm going to do 1.4 and then this is going to be Fabric 120 slash 0.1 slash 0.2. I think that that makes it a little bit more a little bit clearer on what it is and the name right here is just going to be the name that is displayed for the people right so as an example right here this is the same but for rei basically it just makes it easier for the user to immediately see ah this is for fabric 124 and then this is the actual version of the mod that's basically what you want to do you just want to make it as easy for the user as possible once that is done we're going to hit create and after loading for a while you can see this version has now been created you can go back to versions and upload a new version so you can see this is all that we have so we're actually going to do that for the forge version just because why not right so once again we're just going to drag in the jar file right here and it's immediately going to create this in this case, this is also going to be version 1.4. This is going to be a release for Forge. It actually detected this from the name again. This one is only available for 1.20 and 1.20.1. This is also initial upload. And the name here is going to be the same thing, right? So we're once again going to say Gregu 1.4. And this is then for Forge 1.20 slash 0.1. There you go. With that done, we're also going to hit create. And there we go. We've now created a Forge and a Fabric Jar file over here. Both releases. Awesome. With that, the first check over here is done. We can then add a description. So let's go. So if we click here, we get this description and this is a markdown format. So basically we can add different headings, right? We can make things bold. All of that is possible. So the first thing I'm going to add here is my warning in this case as the mod that I'm adding. As the mod that I'm adding is actually quite dangerous. Then I'm going to add a couple of other things. So we're going to add a heading right here. This is going to be origins of the gray goo and this is my backstory let's just add a little bit of uh an italics to this we then have features of the mod and i will also add that there are some custom game rules that are important so what you want to do in this instance is basically you want to make sure that people understand what your mod is and what it does and how you can use it Make sure you write a complete description of your mod and that you add everything that you want to add. You can also, if you want to add images, but we can actually take a look at that in a second as well. So we're going to save changes right here. 
And you can see the second checklist here is done. Nice. Then we want to add an icon. So let's go to the general settings right here and you can see we can upload an icon. So we're going to hit the upload icon button right here and we're going to choose the JPEG as the file can be too big. And there we go. We've uploaded the icon and here we can do some other changes as well. Client side. Well, this is actually required and server side. It is also required. The visibility means listed, right? So we can change it here as well if we want to. And then we can just hit the save changes over here. And with that, we have also done the icon. We then want to feature a gallery image. We're going to do that. So we're going to go here to the gallery and it's then going to ask us to add an image. So in this case, the image I'm going to add is just going to be, well, the destroyed, destroyed landscape over here. We can add a title, a description and also the index. So basically, if you have multiple images, in what order are they going to be displayed in? All right, we're going to add this image and you can see under the gallery, we now have the destroyed world by Grey Goo and we can even size it up and see it all in action. Pretty cool. We then want to select some tags. So let's visit the tag settings. You can select multiple tags over here. In my case, this is going to be, I think cursed is actually not too bad as an, as a thing. It is also magic, maybe a little bit of utility, although I'm not sure. And we're also going to feature the cursed tag here. You can up, you can select up to three of them that are featured. In this case, I'm actually okay with this. Save the changes and there we go. We can also add external links. So let's visit the link settings. You can see there's an issue tracker. We can add the source code. We can even add a wiki page as well as a Discord invite. In this case, I only want to add a Discord invite right here. And when it comes to the donation, I can also add my Patreon because why not? You can even add multiple ones. That's actually pretty nice. But in this case, I'm actually okay with this. And there we go. You also want to select a license. This is a little bit more complicated. So if you have no idea about licensing and all of that, there are two, you know, very quick things that you can think about. All rights reserved means that you own all the rights and no one can do basically anything with it. And they're not allowed to just redistribute the mod or redistribute the source code, for example. In the case of the Grey Goo mod, this is actually the the license I will choose. However, the other license that's quite easy to understand is the MIT license. That's the personal one that I use for all of my other mods that aren't, well, game breaking and like and world destroying. But in this case, I'm going to choose all rights reserved. You can also go to the licensing guide over here that has some more information on this as well. So we can now hit save changes. And now all of the publishing checklist has been done. And you can see I can basically submit this for review. Now, this is, of course, quite important, right? So we have to submit this for review and a moderator will then take a look at this. So we're just going to hit the submit for review button. And you can see that is it. It is now under review and it's now going to take anywhere from maybe a couple of hours to a couple of days. Some it depends on how many things are being uploaded. Of course, that's just the way that it is. But if you stay patient, then I'm pretty sure that at some point your mod is going to get published. And if there are any changes, then the moderators will tell you what those changes are. And there you go. With that, you have uploaded a mod to Modrinth. What might also be interesting is this video right here as YouTube thinks you'll enjoy the most. Hope to see you there. So yeah.